Welcome to Conversations with Kelly, where we sit down with business leaders across the state of Delaware to take a deep dive into topics that matter to the business community. I'm Kelly Basil with the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce, and today's episode is all about workforce development and upskilling. Today with me, I have Colleen Marone, President and CEO of Goodwill of Delaware and Delaware County. And I have with me Dr. Darren Blackston, who is the Executive Director of Workforce Development and Training at Delaware State University. Thank you both for joining me. Uh, Before we get into the topic, we have a quick word from our sponsor. The Conversations with Kelly podcast is powered by Easter Seals Delaware and Maryland's Eastern Shore, and they're marking a huge milestone, their 75th anniversary. Easter Seals is celebrating 75 years of creating an inclusive community, 75 years of first steps for children, independence for adults with disabilities, and support for seniors and their families. Easter Seals is celebrating 75 years of a legacy ensuring a future where everyone is 100% included and 100% empowered. And they're just getting started. Happy anniversary to Easter Seals Delaware and Maryland's Eastern Shore. To learn more or donate, visit de.easterseals.com. That's de.easterseals.com. And we're back. All right, let's get into it. Upskilling. I don't know that everyone really knows that term quite yet, but it's definitely becoming a trend right now. Um, I want to really just explore that with both of you. Colleen, being with Easter, or I'm sorry, we're at Easter Seals. You're not with Easter Seals. (laughs) You're with Goodwill. Um, Being with Goodwill, a huge part of your mission is workforce development, um, which is why we've asked you to be here today. And and Darren, coming from higher education, Mm. you know, you're working with training the people as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I thank you both for being here um, and contributing to this. Darren, why don't you start us off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, um, and thank you for having me and Colleen. And you do some tremendous work at Goodwill Industries. Um, We've done it. We've had a long history working with Goodwill. And so we're very excited. Uh, What I do is I really focus on a number of areas around workforce development and training. Um, Our motto is education, uh, workforce development and training. and But the biggest one is uh, wealth creation through training. Mm. And I think that's been the huge thing for us. So my job is to work with the community as well as work with our, our university leadership uh, around developing programs that are most in need in the community. I think one of the things that we have been able to do um, is to listen to the community about the needs of the community. And I think that's why we've been successful along with the, like the, in, like Goodwill we listen and, and we provide, uh, we use a lot of data. We're a data-driven mm-hmm. uh, university around workforce. Um, our, 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 our dean, uh, Dr. Patrice Gillen Johnson, is the former secretary of labor. So we have a strong tie with the Department of Labor, mm-hmm. um, not just locally, um, but nationally. We work with the National Department of Labor where we wrote a $9 million grant and Delaware State received $2 million uh, of that to upscale and to train individuals in the area of IT. So for me, upscaling is 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 uh, the opportunity for individuals to come in and get trained to uh, in in I call it short term courses mm-hmm. that build out a portfolio of competencies. That's what scaling is me. So you build on the skill sets that you have, and you create more that you can use at a later date. Mm-hmm. Colleen. Yeah, and upskilling is, I think, one of those terms that is just so front and center right now. When you said wealth creation and um, the ability for individuals to develop wealth, it's the same at Goodwill. Mm -hmm. Um, Our job is helping individuals connect to work, and the power of work provides the individual's opportunity to improve their quality of life. Um, So, so much is similar between our two organizations, even Mm -hmm. though we're very different, a community-based organization and an education, but we need each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We also say it's not just the power of work, but the power of education. And that upskilling is really education. Mm -hmm. It's just education that's done on the job. Colleen makes such a strong point about um, the industry, the nonprofit world. We've really evolved as higher ed to really focus on working with nonprofit to provide those opportunities. I think what higher ed has done and and the nonprofit world has done is is kind of laid out a blueprint 
for us on how to educate individuals that come through Easter Seals and Goodwill. So we've, we've really specialized with working with leaderships, leaders like Colleen and, and, and leaders here at Easter Seal to provide those specific trainings so that individuals can leave here and go out and build the wealth, build mm-hmm. the career for themselves. But like you said, be self-sustaining. And the biggest <coughs> thing in wealth creation is getting a living wage. You know, mm-hmm. we, we do a lot of work with Walmart and Amazon. And one of the things I'm always talking to them about is around, you know, building a living wage, which builds wealth creation, you know, and I think, you know, working with Easter Seals as well as Goodwill has helped us kind of lay out a blueprint and build out the courses that we have. We have over 40 programs with 80 competencies, and that doesn't happen by circumstance. That happens because of people like Colleen and others who work with us to build up those companies for everybody to be successful. Definitely. Yeah, a lot of our workforce at Goodwill and a lot of the programs we provide are for entry-level workers. Okay. And it is the opportunity for individuals coming out of difficult situations to get that first opportunity to return to work. Mm -hmm. The toughest thing is for us to get them to continue learning. Once you get that job, that Mm -hmm. upskilling is how do we continue to move you from this job to the next job, mm-hmm. to the job after that, so that you're continuing to build that wealth, right. build mm-hmm. your your skills, stack them together, mm-hmm. and be able to have a better quality of life. Mm-hmm. So workforce development is always a priority. It has been for, mm-hmm. what, since the dawn of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a new thing. Um, but upskilling is relatively new in that... Um, sort of the changing landscape of the workforce is that, you know, a lot of employers right now are seeing um, candidates not qualified for the job. <laughs> and a lot of that has to do with, you know, automation, um, new technology. Right. So tell me about the landscape that you're seeing and how you're um, needing to react to all of that as trainers. I I want to put COVID behind us, but (laughs) every time you go back and you look at what happened two years ago, things just accelerated at a speed Mm -hmm. that was something we weren't ready for. We had no idea we could work from home so easily Mm -hmm. and not have to go into an office nine to five to do our jobs. Um, If you're working in the service industry, you were extremely disrupted during that COVID time because yeah. you couldn't work. Everything right. was closed down. Yeah. But if you had those higher level skills of com- being able to use a computer mm-hmm. technology, um, there were opportunities where you, you could have maintained employment through that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we now are faced with, you know, even faster growth mm-hmm. of that technology and we've got to get people up to speed. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we found out uh, with the pandemic was the level of complacency within individuals that were working because they were working and they were getting a paycheck and they were um, providing for their families. And and when the pandemic hit, what we were hearing and the research that we were doing is that the quality of work is as m- is, is much as important as the work itself. Mm-hmm. And so, and the other piece of that was that when individuals, especially in the culinary arts or the culinary, you know, the restaurant business and things of that nature, we got a tremendous growth in our programs around that because individuals mostly didn't have the skills to go beyond just that industry. And so uh, we had some issues with manufacturing and small businesses. So what we found out was, like you said, like Colleen had said, I think the pandemic really kind of laid it out for us twofold. One, that individuals were really looking to build on their already skill set, but didn't have the actual specific skills that they need for a different job. Yeah. The other piece that we found out was those power skills, as industry call it now, we used to call them soft skills. Mm -hmm. Those non-technical skills that you need, like customer service, critical thinking, um, time management. You know, I I walked into Acme yesterday and I was in line um, before the Super Bowl and um, the cashier, uh, you know, was she was very nice, but she was very young. So her customer service skills were lacking. Well, I ended up having to going back because I forgot something. I got in a line with someone a little older, and her customer skills were more on point. And mm-hmm. so I think those are the kind of things that the pandemic really taught us about skill sets and specific skill sets around that. We work with a lot of industry that actually are calling us to say, we're, this is what we're looking for, mm-hmm. you know, in those power skills, those competencies and things that we can do better so that we can do it, and especially if a company doesn't have a lot of resources 
they have to be real specific in what they're looking for and what we can train individuals because they have to hit the ground running so that they can be product companies can be productive and profitable. What are some of the soft skills that are in demand right now? They're probably the same ones that have always been in demand. Mm -hmm. Customer service, mm -hmm. being on time, mm -hmm. knowing how to interact with mm -hmm. others, teamwork, mm -hmm. um, engagement. Mm -hmm. I'll add one more, as Colleen has said it on the head, um, a cultural competency is a huge one now. So we deal with a, we deal with a diverse world. And okay. one of the things that we really focus on, obviously we're at an HBCU, but one of the things that we kept hearing from you know, individuals outside the HBU community was cultural competency. And, and so we really focused on that skill as well, beyond, beyond just the main skills that Colleen talked about. Now, do you integrate that into all of your programs or did you create something very specific for that? We, we integrated in everything that we try to do mm -hmm. based on the, the competency itself. But cultural competency is, is, is pretty much embedded in everything we do at Delaware State University. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's embedded in everything we do as well mm -hmm. um, from a workforce development skills training initiative. It's one of those things that you're focusing on either directly or indirectly watching individuals mm -hmm. as they're progressing through a program. So you both train people and send them off into the workforce. Um, and a lot of that's through partnerships. I'm curious, you know, what what kinds of partnerships do you typically work with? Are, are people coming to you? Or are you seeking them out? I'm across the board. I think both. We we do seek out um, community-based individuals. We work with the one-stop programs throughout the state nonprofits. So they mm -hmm. seek us out when they want a program. Um, like I said, uh, the Delaware Department of Labor seeked us out. I, I work closely with the lieutenant governor's office um, and, and things that they are trying to do. I worked on Governor Carney's um, workforce development uh, task force last year where we had a huge um, uh, uh, job fair mm -hmm. at the old Blue Hen Mall down there. So we do both. We seek each individual out. We have partnerships with a number of companies around the area. We're, we're seeking out individuals, but they do call us when they want a specific program set up just for a particular group or community. So we do, and we advertise a lot. You know, our door is always open. Mm -hmm. Like our, our relationship with Goodwill is really, really strong. It actually could be a, it's a blueprint. We're looking to work with Easter Seals, any, any industry. We're working now with more K-12 programs across the board. So we do seek out them, but they also seek out us. And it's more than just community-based organizations, nonprofits, and education. I think, as the doctor said, it's government. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And it's also You're the business right. environment, mm -hmm. oh, the definitely. business community, and, and members of Delaware State Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, we need the businesses at the table as well to tell us what they need mm -hmm. right. so that we can help provide exactly what's needed right. and not provide the things that may have, you know, run their course and we need to move on to the things that are needed for the mm -hmm. workforce of the future. What sort of programs does Goodwill offer? So uh, we've been spending a lot of time on digital skills. Okay. Entry level digital skills, because a lot of the colleges and educations focus on some of those intermediate and advanced level. Okay. But we're finding what we can provide in that pocket of entry is, you know, just the basic skills that get somebody um, afraid, not afraid of just touching a computer mm -hmm. or interacting. And they do it each and every day. You know, you go to Wawa and you order a sandwich yeah. and you're using technology. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You answer your phone and you're using mm -hmm. technology. But sometimes when they get in front of a computer, there's yeah. that fear of utilizing that computer that they're going to break it or something's going to go wrong. I think everyone could use an Excel class. I always feel like I'm well, learning a new yeah, <laughs> trick it is, it in Excel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was in Washington <clears throat> not too long ago, and we're looking at the IT, you know, area cooling. And so now we're really going to be looking back at advanced manufacturing okay. and, and things of that nature. So we really focus on those type of trends, tooling, uh, computer numeric operations technology, which you use in areas. I think Colleen speaks to the, you know, people coming at the beginning of it and learning more um, remedial stuff to move to the more advanced stuff. And I mm -hmm. think that's one of the things that we have. Uh, sometimes I think at higher ed, we kind of take advantage that individuals know, <clears throat> excuse me, coming in more advanced, but then we find out, especially in the um, workforce development space, that they haven't been in school for a really long time. Right. So we have to make sure that we manage expectation and provide those resources so they can advance and be successful, but also to 
to Colleen's point earlier, is build that confidence and then being learning, going back to learning. We, that's what we were found in a workforce development space. We were having issue with retention um, in my past life. And one of the things we found out when we did our survey was the fact that people hadn't been in school in a long time, and it can be overwhelming and intimidating. Mm-hmm. So I think with the, you know, going back to the uh, stackable credentials and those areas, you know, there are short-term courses that you can build four, six, eight, ten weeks or six months if you're getting a national certification. And that builds confidence when you're successful. Then you look to come back to, to school and, and add that credential to a degree. Um, you know, we have a, a prior learning program starting, which I'm going to be supervising in the coming months, and which will be also people coming in with experience, like people from Goodwill or Easter Seals who come in with life experience, and they can get credit for that. Yeah. And that really helps. I mean, that builds confidence. I can come in and get 15, 20, 30 credits for all the work that I've done in IT, healthcare, nonprofit, so I don't have to take... 10,000 classes, but I can limit them out and save money, Mm -hmm. then I'm going to come back and get my degree along and add it to those stackable credentials. Well, you transitioned for me. I was actually going to specifically go over to stackable skills, which is a huge, you know, Mm -hmm. piece of upskilling, you know, so you, you get your entry level training and, you know, you go off and you use that, that skill that's now acquired. Oh, but I need a level two course or, Mm -hmm. um, some other thing that complements it. And I think that's a lot of what people are looking for now. Do you find that people come back to you often for for added training? Yeah, I think, you know, at the speed that things are changing, those stackable skills are going to be something mm-hmm. that needs to become part of our everyday mm-hmm. workforce yeah. training. Mm-hmm. Um, every company is going to have to continue providing the, mm-hmm. the skills to meet the needs of technology tomorrow Mm -hmm. and those stackable credentials can be offered in so many different ways now Um, you know you don't have to just go into a classroom Mm -hmm. to get those skills Mm -hmm. you know all of our education um, Mm -hmm. organizations like Delaware State provide the opportunities to do things online or Mm -hmm. virtually Mm -hmm. as well as you know there's so many available Mm -hmm. courses online yeah through Mm -hmm. Coursera and Google Mm -hmm. and tons of um, free data that's out there, free Mm -hmm. information that you can develop your skills um, independently with Mm -hmm. the desire to do so. Mm. Well, so the employee has to have the desire, but I also think the employer needs to support that. Um, And that's almost, you know, a Mm -hmm. retention strategy, Mm -hmm. being able to support your employees through, you know, lifelong learning, Mm -hmm. I think helps them stick with you longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've, we've really worked with a lot of companies uh, recently around helping them develop a really solid corporate culture around mm-hmm. that, giving individuals opportunities to learn um, while they're working, um, you know, allowing, the, you know, even us going into a, an organization, we we tend to, we, we offer up actual, you know, training a la carte in different players, but we also, we, we're mobile, we're mobile training, where if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Colleague speaks to the online piece. Um, we're really big working now with internships and intern programs. So we're we're trying, to, you know, they say this, but we're trying to be all things to all people. And yeah. I think that's the one thing that we can do is provide a, a smorgasbord of opportunities around what is needed. And I think that's kind of how we all work together. Like we work with Goodwill and other industries and banking and, and finance and healthcare and IT and professional organizations that um, that we come across every day. This is what we're here to do. So if you need us to do this particular, we will customize a program just for your individual organization or your individual employees. And I think it's worked really well for us and and it's worked well, I think, in our state as well. Definitely. And every employer and industry's needs are so unique. So it's great that you're kind of catering to exactly Mm -hmm. what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in order to be successful, going forward, we've got to meet the needs of each individual and each individual person Mm -hmm. and business. You know, let's be strategic and provide the resources and the opportunities to the individuals where they exist, Mm -hmm. when they're needed, and how they might be best delivered. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So we've talked about skill stacking, but there's also another term out there called transferable skills. Um, And, you know, it that's when you know, you have this list of skill sets where that could apply to where you are mm-hmm. or it can transfer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to another career or industry. Are you seeing a lot of, around transferable skills? 
Yeah, I think for us, it's been one of the, the, the terms that has resonated beyond, before individuals actually get to, to our programs. Uh, it's happening in high school, having transferable skills that mm-hmm. you can now that. And I think the pandemic really kind of in the last two to three years for us, um, transferable skills has been at the forefront of what, what we've been trying to do and, and it's, uh, not as assist on um, assist individuals on getting those transferable skills because we really found that individuals were when they the pandemic hit and people were going out of work they they didn't have transferable skills so it became a priority and a priority for individuals so we're seeing a an uptake in transferable skills around those power skills that we talked about yeah. customer service training but also specific skills you know IT training but tying into financial management or financial literacy, which we see as more of a transferable skill, mm-hmm. but adding that to the to your to your portfolio. So we see a lot of it coming through, and it's a good thing because I think going forward, as we move post you know pandemic and going into um, you know we're twenty three years into the twenty first century, we've really got to be more about you know being diversified in all the things that we do in terms of our learning and our work. And at Goodwill, most of our workforce is entry level again. So Mm -hmm. we're providing a lot of those transferable skills, those basic transferable skills, customer service, our retail stores, Mm -hmm. our janitorial programs, our temp staffing agency is all about developing some of those skills that could be transferable to another employer, Um, providing that workforce that can hopefully step up and meet some of the needs tomorrow. I feel like also when it comes to transferable skills, all skills really, you know, it's helping people take a step back and see what they have and what they might need. Mm -hmm. I I think there's a lot of people out there who Mm -hmm. don't realize what they already have. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's, it's a, it's a change in mindset too. Do you, do you help people Mm -hmm. kind of list out what they have when it's come time for maybe building your resume? Yeah, one of the things that we do, we call it personal inventory of need. Okay. And so that's kind of how I phrased it. And so the way we do it, we sat down with individuals. Our team is amazing. And so when I coined the phrase when I first started working in workforce development because somebody taught me that. And so, you know, that kind of, t- uh, you know, you know, taking stock of what you have and where you want to go is extremely important. So doing a personal inventory of need kind of lays out where you want to go mm-hmm. and what you need in those skill sets. So it's part of our, uh, our orientation, our, ent- our entry program orientation, orientation, excuse me. And so that kind of lays out for people when they're coming in because they have a plan. We always want individuals to have a plan coming in. Yeah. And sometimes you don't, you don't know, but I think that personal inventory of need kind of lays that blueprint for you. It's sort of like that table of contents where you can kind of look at it from that perspective. And I'm and sure before. seeing that on paper Absolutely. also helps it does them help. see yes. yeah, exactly. where they could go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, where they mm-hmm. maybe never right. thought about it before. Right. Mm-hmm. And we talk about the fact that individuals find something that you want to do that you're going to enjoy as well. You know, I mean, we, we with the pandemic taught us a major thing. And I, I heard this from a lot of people coming in who left jobs, who actually went back to work in their former company but left after the after they were able to come back to work because they valued uh, quality of work mm-hmm. compared to just work as well. And yeah. so that's when you take personal stock of what you want to do and where you want to go, then we can help them build a customized program for you going forward. Mm-hmm. And those pathways are actually even starting in our schools. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, yeah. So we're talking about it in, you know, higher education. Right. But, you know, Delaware has started these pathways as mm-hmm. well in the lower education, mm-hmm. the, the K through 12, mm-hmm. maybe not all the way down to kindergarten, but so, you know, really the middle, middle school, school, seventh and eighth grade. grade. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. then we're, you know, we're continuing that out into the workforce mm-hmm. and creating those paths so that, you know, hopefully someday somebody might be able to have <laughs> a path on paper that yeah. started when they were in seventh or eighth yeah. grade mm-hmm. that takes them through to, mm-hmm. you know, their work life. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think Delaware is doing a really good job of, you know, bringing leaders together around those type of issues and, and items they need. I know, I know are Our leadership has been working with others around the state on a prior learning and building out those programs, working with the K-12 system, building like an overall complex plan that this doesn't benefit higher ed and nonprofit, but also the K-12 community because I've worked internationally and taught internationally, and it's a little bit different. Us being competitive in the world is extremely, extremely important. And I think, you know, working, you know, as far going back as third grade uh, and talking about what would you like to do? A simple question about what would you like to do? You know, and then build on that as you get to middle school and then mm-hmm. high school and college and where and so on and so on. 
and and back to you know some of those stackable con- credentials and the learning, um, the ability to experience you know work based oh, learning oh, yeah. work, is yeah. a mm-hmm. huge mm-hmm. thing as mm-hmm. well because yeah. you might think you want right. to be mm-hmm. a nurse or a teacher mm-hmm. or an accountant, but when you physically go and try it or see it, <laughs> you might decide no, I really right. want to do something mm-hmm. else. Right. So that opportunity for us to incorporate Mm -hmm. um, real life experience Mm -hmm. and skills into somebody's um, choice of a career Mm -hmm. or work in the future, I think is really important. Yeah. And I was going to say, and the ability that, um, you know, college is great. And, and, but we also have part of our workforce that, you know, just technical skills training could Mm -hmm. really provide a great opportunity for them and being open, which Mm -hmm. I think we've seen a tremendous, um, opening of mm-hmm. is that there are different pathways for individuals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and it might not be that four year degree mm-hmm. anymore. Right. Um, and, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of mm-hmm. jobs now employers mm-hmm. are recognizing that mm-hmm. you don't necessarily mm-hmm. have to have that as a prereq. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so even, right. but still going to a DSU to mm-hmm. take a, a degree course right. mm-hmm. is helpful. It's, right. You know, we're still saying, yes, you need to get some level of mm-hmm. education. It just mm-hmm. might not be that traditional way that we thought before. I, I think you have a, we have a variety. I, um, I, we have a, a, a digital badging program because I, like Colleen talked about, you know, a college degree is an artifact. It's such on your wall. It, it, it says that you met the requirements to receive a degree. What stackable credentials and other credentials and, and, and digital badging credentials do is it gives you specific skill sets like electronic resume. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we, we working with Creedly, who is one of our, our partners around digital badging. And, and so if an individual comes in and takes uh, like an IT, like a cybersecurity, it, it, it layers all the competencies in that particular program. If you do so, when an employer goes out and they see your electronic resume, you know, they say, oh, yeah, you have a degree from Delaware State, but oh, wow, you have all these competencies into oh, IT yeah. as well. So I already know where you're going to go. So, you know, there's not there's not such a learning curve. And industry has really gotten beyond just learning curve. They want you to come in ready to go. And they mm-hmm. tell us that all the time. Mm-hmm. So I do think what, what Colleen talked about, and you don't have to have a degree to get into a position, a high-end position, uh, if you have those uh, skill sets and credentials going forward. Because now I know what specific skills you have. And now this is the best place for you, especially for a company that, you know, has limited resources. They want you to come and hit the ground running because they want you to build their bottom line like you build your own bottom line. And I think that's been our biggest biggest um, challenge, but it's also been our biggest strength and win for us at DSU is to kind of lay out those kind of conversations with individuals coming in and working with employers and say, hey, you know, that's, she's got a four-year degree in IT. That's great. But she's also she's um, uh, she's got a huge huge background in uh, cybersecurity, and that's what we need so we can right. hit the ground running. I have to commend the governor for placing such a spotlight on workforce development strategies during his terms. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he recognizes that the importance of what a job means to the economy. Um, but the, the new thing, so it, he said this at our annual dinner since he's started in public service, it was always, you know, jobs, 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 jobs. We need to create jobs. Now there's more jobs than people looking. Mm -hmm. Um, And how does, you know, upskilling work into that strategy of making sure that those now fewer, more valuable people are are getting into where they need to be? For me, I think, what employers need to do. And I, and I was at the annual dinner when the governor was talking about it. And we do have, it's a good problem to have, but I think employers have to kind of lay out what they can offer you. I, and I went to college on a basketball, I went to, on a basketball scholarship. And the one thing that I remember about that was that the coach called me or wrote me a letter or talked to my high school coach every day. He wanted me. And I think that's kind of how we get employees mm. Back to employers, you have to be wanted. And I think that's what the pandemic taught us is that employees value work. They're not just going to go work long hours for little pay anymore. They figured out how to do it. And so when employers want to you know, really bring in, you know, I, I had an opportunity to go to um, Purdue. You know, and when you hear Purdue, you hear chicken and everything. But they do some amazing work beyond just 
chicken. I mean, oh, yeah. the technology, the, the science around it. It's amazing. And it would be wonderful somebody in the agricultural field. But if you don't know and you're not marketing what your, your company is providing and how they can do it, you know, you know, what's in it for me type principle. Hey, if you come here, this can happen then you're not going to get the best in the brightest or fill those jobs that you need. So I think organizations, and I think we're doing a better job of it, mm -hmm. but I do think organizations really have to kind of lay out what they can provide for employers to come and build the quality of life they're looking for in a job or a career. And I think there's an opportunity with entry-level employers, em employees, to, we have to get them re-engaged in learning mm -hmm. so that you don't just develop the comfort level that you've got a job, you've got a paycheck, um, but engage them in how do they continue their learning to take that next step. And, and there's a lot of fear sometimes in moving out from an employer to right. take that next step somewhere else. So we've got to help individuals get the skills and also give them the comfort of transitioning into mm -hmm. different jobs, accepting that change and moving on is a positive thing and give them that support in doing that. Yeah. I want to transition to our next little segment it's called Combo Connections. And I'm going to ask both of you to give a shout out to a person or a company in Delaware that you think deserves the shout out. Darren, I'm going to call you first. Okay. I, I think the, the organization I would that um that has done some tremendous work is First State Community Action. It's led by Bernice Edwards. Mm. Um I also like I said, we don't sell our own, but Goodwill Industry is another one who I have great respect for in Easter Seals. So those three right there who do a tremendous amount of work. Your employees are top notch and you do a lot of good work. So all th all three of those are wonderful. I really look forward to continue our partnerships with them and all the work they've been doing and, and how they help our community. Mm hmm Colleen? So, so the first one that I had is really kind of outside of this whole conversation. It's but totally fine. I, I just have to say how um, impressed I was with the news last week about um, Longwood Gardens purchasing oh, yeah. Grenogue and mm -hmm. saving that, what, 500 acres of mm -hmm. property. Um, I think that's just a tremendous opportunity for um, preserving open space and um you know, the community and just a beautiful piece of property to be preserved. So um, we've been doing a lot at Goodwill around sustainability and to see something like that was just yeah. um, really just um, great news to see. Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my shout out, I'm going to give it to the Food Bank of Delaware. Mm -hmm. I yes, do. toured their um, Newark site last week. They're a Superstars in Education and Training Award winner. Um, that's a, an awards program under the, the state chamber. And so I, I, I knew they did workforce development training, mm -hmm. but going on site last week and seeing it, they have a, a culinary program and a logistics training program. It's amazing. It, it's really amazing. Yeah, and I think everyone work. needs to go mm -hmm. you know, to see what Goodwill and Food Bank and Easter Seals are really doing um, cause it is, it's just amazing work. So Darren, if anyone wanted to get in contact with you, how can they reach you? Um, they can reach me at Delaware state university. Um, they can reach it by my email address, D Blackston at D E S U dot E D U or by phone at, uh, 302-857-6144. Colleen. Colleen Marone. It's C Marone at goodwill de dot org. And they can reach me by phone at 302-504-5734. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really thank enjoyed the conversation, me. and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>